On the 20th of February 1999, Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee set off from Amritsar in a gold-colored luxury coach to inaugurate the Delhi Lahore bus service. As the bus crossed the border dividing India and Pakistan at Wagha, Vajpayee made the most courageous and perhaps even audacious overture for peace with Pakistan. I am conscious that this is a defining moment in South Asian history and I hope we will be able to rise to the challenge. He told a group of Indians accompanying him, the media and his Pakistani hosts, including Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif. But Vajpayee was a worried man. Just as the bus took off from Amritsar, 26 Hindus were killed by Kashmiri terrorists in Jammu. It was a desperate attempt by terrorists to sabotage Vajpayee's peace-building initiative. On the other side of the border, in Pakistan, the fundamentalist group jamaat e islami came out on the streets to thwart this bus diplomacy. This forced Vajpayee and Sharif to travel from the Vagha border to Lahore via helicopter. The next day, Jamaat workers pelted stones at the Indian convoy, but Vajpayee was unmoved. In a dramatic gesture that took both his supporters and his detractors by surprise, Vajpayee even posed for pictures in front of the Minare Pakistan in Lahore. The soaring minar or tower, a monument to the creation of Pakistan, was erected at the very site where the Muslim League passed the 1940 resolution demanding the creation of a separate homeland for India's Muslims. It was a bold move by a man who belonged to the right wing Rashtra Swayam Sevak Sangh or RSS, an organization that believes in Akhand Bharat or a united India and rejects the 1947 partition of India as a historical folly. At a reception later that day, Vajpayee said, some people in my party might say that by going to the Minare e Pakistan, I have placed my mohar or seal on Pakistan. Does Pakistan need my seal of approval? Pakistan is a reality. We want it to grow and thrive. There has been so much enmity. Let's give friendship an opportunity. In these 24 hours, I feel the distance between Delhi and Lahore has become a little less. Together, let us make a new beginning. The two countries then signed the Lahore Declaration, which called for a bilateral resolution to all the issues that faced both neighbours, including that of Jammu and Kashmir and terrorism. The declaration echoed the spirit of the Shimla Agreement of 1972, which had underlined bilateralism as a means to resolve all problems. Vajpayee and Sharif also addressed the new security environment in the subcontinent, which had been tense after the nuclear tests by the two countries. A little over six months earlier, and emphasized the need to avoid conflicts. While Vajpayee was in Lahore, Pakistani Army Chief Parvez Musharraf was executing a major operation to occupy strategic heights in the Kargil, Dras and Batalik sectors of Kashmir. Masquerading as Mujahideen, soldiers crossed the line of control or LOC and entered Indian territory. The intrusion was discovered in early May 1999 and Vajpayee ordered the Indian Army to push back the Pakistani intruders. It was very, very risky. Indian soldiers had to climb mountain cliffs in full view of the intruders, braving mortar shells and bullets. According to official figures, 527 Indian soldiers were killed and 1,367 injured in what came to be called the Kargil War. Just three months after the Vajpayee Sharif Bonhomi in Lahore, India and Pakistan were on the verge of a full-fledged war with the risk of a nuclear conflagration. Vajpayee took two important decisions to make sure that the Kargil operation remained a limited war while also meeting India's objectives. First, he insisted that India would not accept a ceasefire unless Pakistani soldiers retreated from Indian territory. Second, he instructed the Army and the Air Force not to cross the LOC while evicting the intruders. Vajpayee's restraint paid diplomatic dividends 
President Bill Clinton asked Nawaz Sharif to withdraw his forces from Kargil. Clinton rejected Sharif's claim that the intruders were separatist mujahideen and not regular soldiers. Finally, Sharif had to order the Pakistani army to withdraw from the Indian side at the LOC. By the end of July, Pakistani forces had been evicted from Indian territory. This was Vajpayee's second stint as Prime Minister, an eventful 13 months that were marked by three major developments. The nuclear tests, the Lahore bus journey and the Kargil war. His decisions were a testament to his bold, imaginative and pragmatic foreign policies. Vajpayee's creative foreign policies helped India to repair ties with the US and even enter into a strategic partnership with that country. Although his efforts to resolve festering issues with Pakistan and China did not succeed, they laid the groundwork to revisit policies that led to India being recognized as a regional power.